Happy Corpus Christi, St. Mary. Jesus tells us today in the gospel, this, which is happening here at the Last Supper, that while they were eating, he took bread. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, gave it to them and said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant. These are the exact words of our Lord Jesus. And you know what? He meant them. He meant them. It's not a symbol of anything. He meant them. This is my body. This is my blood. In actuality, Jesus was very intentional. At the moment of consecration of the Mass, when the Holy Spirit comes down, he converts ordinary bread and wine at the altar, at the Mass, into Jesus, his holy body, his holy blood, the true presence of Jesus entirely is given to all of us as his precious body, blood, soul, and divinity. So this is a very precious gift that Jesus gives to us. We have to really know it and know it and believe it. So many people, it says only 30% of Catholics believe this. I feel that is so sad because Jesus is right there, right now in the tabernacle, looking at all of us. You know, we need our Lord Jesus in our life in the Eucharist because that gives us strength and hope and guides us. When we receive Holy Communion, the body of Jesus inside of our body, we have that share in God's own divine life. It makes us, all of us, you, you personally, a tabernacle of the true presence. So we need to always remember that when we receive our Lord Jesus, we must be pure. We must be void of all mortal sins and venial sins. When we receive Jesus at the Mass, at the beginning of every Mass, you see me up there and we say, I say the uh, penitential act, the penitential rite where we have the Lord have mercy, deacon says, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. And then I say the words of absolution, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to ever life, everlasting life. That's not just for my own sake, you guys. That is for all of us. We are receiving holy, confe uh, holy absolution at that time, which forgives all of us of our venial sins. So we can take care of having Holy Communion if we've committed any venial sins. Now, mortal sins are intentionally against the Ten Commandments that are done with full conscience or intention or grave sins that are not forgiven. And those are not forgiven at the beginning of Mass. Those require us to have the sacrament of confession, of reconciliation. And I know everyone knows this, you know, you know, knows this, they've, been, they've, been, they've known this ever since they were a child, but we need reminders, you guys, we need reminders. We need reminders. People ask me these questions over and over again, so I know that it's very important that you understand about receiving Jesus unworthily. We know that God's divine mercy always, though, is with us, and that God gave us all the sacraments to help us, to help us get into heaven. So for the sake of the sorrowful passion, Jesus has given us his mercy and upon mercy upon the whole world. Our Lord Jesus knows us always through and through. He knows our hearts. He knows that we're sinners and he wants to forgive us. And his true presence is always in that most holy body and blood. So we are blessed here to Saint Mary, at St. Mary because we have perpetual adoration at our old St. Mary Church where we're gonna go uh, for our procession today for Corpus Christi. And we have lots, done lots of improvements to that chapel. It said that the churches, uh, I've, I've read this and heard about this, that the churches who have perpetual 24 hour, seven days a week adoration of Jesus have the most blessings in their parish. They have the most vocations to the priesthood and religious life in their parishes. 
And we know that in recent times, we've had two homegrown St. Mary Mokina young men have that vocation to the priesthood and have ordination. Also, we are a wonderful teaching parish. We've had seminarians come here and become priests, you know, and we are looking forward to more and more coming here as we are a teaching parish uh, of the Diocese of Joliet. So we have this beautiful, beautiful, holy community right here that welcomes the Blessed Sacrament, that welcomes the Eucharist. I love Eucharistic adoration. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, if you don't already have a devotion to Eucharistic adoration, I encourage you to try it, to try adoration, to go to the chapel just for a short time. You know, be in front of Jesus in the monstrance. You know, spend just you know, a little time with him at first, maybe 10 minutes. You know, you don't have to do the whole hour at the very beginning. Whatever time you have, you'll be drawn to him and want to spend more and more time with him in adoration to the Blessed Sacrament. So let the Lord wash over you in your prayer when you're over there. You know, let his presence get into your bones, okay? Pray openly as you look at Jesus in that monstrance in the Blessed Sacrament, talking to him like a friend, because Jesus is truly there on that altar. Know him and love him. Now, when I was 35 years old, I'm going to share a story, I had my first encounter with Jesus in adoration. I never knew adoration, about adoration until I was about 35 years old. Like, my home, like St. Mary, my home parish in Naperville, St. Elizabeth Seton, opened our own St. John Paul II Perpetual Adoration Chapel on our parish grounds. And they were converted from the rectory garage into this beautiful adoration chapel next to our parish office. And so I was curious about it. People told me about it. And I went in there, and I just felt something different, you know. And then I started going just a little at first. And eventually, I got a whole holy hour every single week, making frequent visits, sometimes even falling asleep, you guys. I fell asleep right there, snoring right there on the, in the front pew. But my pastor told me this. My pastor, Father Ernie Norbeck, my mentor, he was like my second dad. He said to me, that the best times are when we are also falling asleep in front of the Blessed Sacrament in the chapel. When we're sleeping, we are to remember this, <clears throat> that we are being held in the arms of Jesus like a father holds his own child when he's sleeping. So that's the image I always have when I go to adoration, if I fall asleep. And I always feel so refreshed, so loved, so joyful when I wake up. So Jesus knows everything that we need. He knows the questions of our hearts. He will answer them in adoration. I guarantee it. If you're trying to discern something important in your life, go to adoration. A great deal of discernment happens right there. That's how I knew I should also be a priest. I had a lot of conversations with Jesus in the adoration chapel. It was a very fruitful time. The joy of thinking about a priest, you know, I had a dream about it, my cursio, and then I brought that dream to adoration. And it brought me great joy thinking about being a priest. So God was calling me in my vocation. Now there was even a time, okay, this is gonna sound crazy, you guys. There was a time I was praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in front of the monstrance, really asking our Lord God if he wanted me, you know, goofy dindo, to be a priest. And you know what he did? He took me by the shirt and pulled me like this. I felt this immediate tug of the shirt drawing me closer and closer to his body on the altar there. I know the grace of a devotion to Jesus is the most wonderful, wonderful thing. It is transforming, especially when you have it in the Eucharist. Okay, so I'm here to also uh, promote that Eucharistic adoration, devotion to our Eucharistic Lord always. Try it. You will not be sorry. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks giving be every moment thine. Now come all you who labor in sorrow and in pain, 
Come, eat this bread from heaven, thy peace and strength regain. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks giving be every moment thine. Amen.